Hi guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, I've got a special guest here today. This is Brian from Liebold, and they make uh, vacuum pumps, among other things. And Brian has brought a vacuum pump for us to check out today. So uh, we're going to be playing with this a little bit, Brian? Yeah, we are. So uh, what I brought the Epicenter today is uh, Liebold's NeoVac 16D two-stage rotary vane oil sealed mechanical pump really great pump uh, it's been on the market for about a year it's got a lot of great features that you just don't find on many vacuum pumps today so I'm gonna kinda walk you around one of the most important features that Liebold has developed for this particular pump is what we call the gas ballast valve and the gas ballast valve is actually very critical in removing water that's in the uh, compression stage of the rotary vane pump. Many pumps that do not have a gas ballast, when you're in uh, high moisture laden processes like freeze drying, you see a lot of vapor, the, the water vapor will actually condense inside and get compressed inside the second stage, which means A, you start to lose performance of the pump. Uh, then B, you start to see a degradation of your ultimate pressure. So what Liebold has done is we've incorporated, and we've done this for many years, this isn't the first pump that we've put this on, but this is our gas ballast feature and it creates a very small air leak into the second stage, the compression stage of the vacuum pump, and it basically is a carrier sweeper gas, just ambient air, what's, what's outside. It enters the pump into the vacuum compressor and it helps move out that water vapor so you're not going to have it uh, degradate your performance. The other nice feature is it helps clean up the, the oil. We all know that water can be the enemy uh, with, with oil and if that water just sits in there time after time the oil becomes emulsified with the water and it becomes really really a mess. So the whole idea is the gas ballast will help get rid of the water vapor inside the vacuum module and it will also help condition the oil by removing the water out as well. So it's a very, very nice feature. We feel it's absolutely critical in these freeze drying applications to have that gas ballast. Uh, the second real nice feature here is what we call an internal oil demister. And what that demister does is it's right behind this plate here, so it comes out very easily, four bolts, it unscrews, uh, it's about that big, maybe 12 inches in length, two inches in diameter. Um, that will actually trap the oil um, and it coalesces it back into the oil box. And so the whole idea is that you don't want oil mist filling up a room or oil loss. That mist is, is essentially oil loss as well. So very critical that we have the uh, oil demister in this pump. Uh, another nice feature is we have a nice built-in drain valve here. Um, so when it's time to change the oil, um, it, we make it very clean. You can get a fitting that will hook right up to that into a, a bottle or whatever your choice of containment is. Uh, you see the sight glass right there. Uh, we like to see the oil about three quarters up. It will vary in time. There is uh, a float in here. As I mentioned with the demister, it traps the oil. Uh, it lands into the exhaust box. Once the float rises, it allows that oil back into the, into the sump of the pump. So a lot of nice features on that aspect. When we turn around the pump, we see a nice automotive style filter. It's a paper filter. It's basically there. It's not there to neutralize the oil or do any fancy stuff like that. It's basically just like in your car. It's there to trap any large particulates or sludge or anything that might block up the uh, oil lubrication uh, circuits in the pump. So um, on, on the motor, it's rated at 115, 60 hertz. Um, it's basically a motor that is developed for uh, North America. Um, works out very, very well. It has a built-in on and off, and then of course you've got a breaker here. Um, on the inlet side here, this is a KF25. We have an adapter that goes from KF25 to three-quarter inch JIC, so you can hook it up to your Harvest Right hoses. Um, also behind this plate uh, is what we call an anti-suckback valve, and what that does is when you shut the pump off, it will um, seal the inlet so you'll not get any backstring of, backstring of oil into the tube. And you've seen that on certain pumps in the past where you turn the pump off and all of a sudden you see a nice rise of oil in the tube. Certainly concerning and a little bit disheartening. 
Um, but with the libel pump, you have a really industrial, time-tested anti-suckback valve. We're going to fire this up. I uh, want to see how loud it is. And I also want to see how long it takes you know, to get down to maximum vacuum and see what that number is. So, Brian, you brought a measuring device with I you did. today. Yeah, this is our TM90. It's a uh, Pirani gauge. It basically goes down uh, from atmosphere 760 tor all the way down to, say, 1 millitor. So certainly a very useful gauge. Uh, it was definitely invented for mostly field service people, uh, just not, not something you're going to leave hooked up, but always to confirm that you have a good pressure on the vacuum pump before you start going through your vacuum system if you have any leaks. It's always good to say, hey, yep, the pump is working where it should. It's hitting its base pressure. Maybe we have a leak in a line or somewhere else. So it's always good to have a starting point, and, and this gauge will help you achieve that. All right. Well, so, let's fire this puppy up. Yeah, so we're at 760 Tor. That's atmosphere. We're going to go ahead and engage it. Now, do you have the ballast on right now? The gas ballast is open right now. Gas ballast open. We're at about 11 microns. That should actually sink a little bit better as the pump warms up. So if we close this gas ballast knob, you definitely see. Oh, that really quieted down. Yeah, too. it quiets it down. Um, and again, as I mentioned, with the gas ballast, it's just basically creating an air leak into the second stage of the vacuum pump to remove moisture or any uh, condensables that might be inside there. So. You can see it, three millitor, that's a pretty good vacuum. Wow, Yeah. awesome. So we'll go ahead and engage it again here to position two. And you can see, we'll be now we're about nine. So there is a little bit of a decrease in the ultimate pressure, and that is because you've introduced the leak. That's really all a gas ballast is, is a controlled leak into the second stage compression area of the uh, two-stage rotary vane pump. So, Brian, what's the noise level on this unit? Uh, this particular pump, the Neovac 16D, is rated at 54 dBA. Uh, so, essentially, it's one of the most quietest pumps on the market today. That is really, really quiet. Yeah, it's running right now. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so give us a rough idea. What's the cost on something like yeah, this? Yeah, so this, this is a brand new pump. Uh, we've had it out for about a year. Um, the price is just shy under $1,800. We look to reduce that price over the next few years, of course, as we work up the economies of scale. Um, so you're looking somewhere under, under $1,800 for this pump. Um, the good news is um, it has, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of nice benefits that are going to provide a lot of uptime. So if you're used to replacing out your, your two-stage rotary vane pumps or your dry pumps on a regular basis, the goal here is to avoid that. Um, and all the benefits that I mentioned earlier and all the features will drive in that reliability with the gas ballast, the oil internal oil demister, and as well as the oil filter on it. We also use a special oil. Um, it's not proprietary, but it is somewhat to libel. It's called our LVO140. It's a hydrocarbon-based oil with some additives, but most importantly, it's a food-grade oil. Uh, in the event that there's any backstreaming or a catastrophic event, the last thing you want on your product is a non-food grade oil. So at Liebold, we're very safety conscious, and all our food um, packaging pumps or food applications like freeze drying, every pump will get a, a food grade type of oil. Well, I want to thank uh, Brian for dropping by and for uh, leaving this pump. And I get to play with this for a while, so uh, hopefully we'll have some other videos. And uh, one thing I really want to do is run two Harvest Right freeze dryers with one pump. So we'll see how that goes. Here's a little teaser. I've been running a bunch of batches with two freeze dryers and one pump. And uh, I'm going to be doing a whole video on that. So if you guys are interested, hit the subscribe button. And when I post that video, it's going to send you a notice. Okay, now this is the Liebold 1.2 horsepower pump. And uh, this draws about 9 amps. So you can't connect this directly to a Harvest Right uh, because the Harvest Right has 8 amp relays in there for controlling the pump. But I'm going to show you in this upcoming video how I did it. It involves external hardware, uh, some relays, and a big power switching box. 
uh, but it's definitely working and it works great. That's about it for the Epicenter.com. I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.